Welcome to another video of Spring Boot Tutorial. In this video, we are simplifying database management and data sources, tackling database structures, configuring Hibernate DDL in application properties. But that's not all. We will also explore the enchanting world of the task scheduling, where we unlock the magic of cron jobs, turning your application into finely tuned automated masterpiece. Get ready to empower your project with precision and efficiency. All while adding that touch of Spring Boot magic. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. Unlock the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and cumbrous science education. Imagine you're the owner of the bustling online store, your business thriving, and you're handling a massive inventory of products. You need a robust system to manage all your sales, customer data, and inventory levels. This is where Spring Boot swoops into your simplify your life. We will explore how to create a pooling data source and examine some of the popular options for achieving this in your Spring Boot application. In Spring Boot, when you want to create a pooling data source, one of the essential steps is verifying that a valid driver class is available. This is crucial for establishing a connection with your database. The configuration property Spring.DataSource.DriverClass name specify the fully qualified class name of the JDBC driver that Spring Boot should use to connect to specific database. In the context of our example, this driver class is set to org.s2.driver which means we are using S2 in memory database. By specifying the driver class name in your Spring Boot application configuration, you are telling Spring how to connect to the database as the driver class is responsible for managing the database connection and communication. When it comes to pooling data source, one of the top choice for Spring Boot is Hikari CP. It's known for being incredible lightweight, like a ray of light in the world of connection pooling. Hikari CP offers excellent performance and is designed with concurrency in mind. If you're using Spring Boot Starter JDBC or JDBC Starter Data or JPAs, you automatically get the demands in Hikari CP. If you see this, when you run your application, you will see that Hikari data source is automatically put in your logs. It's a solid choice for ensuring smooth and efficient database connection. Another option for polling data source is the Tomcat polling data source. This is reliable choice that has been used in various Spring applications. It's a battle tested solution for managing database connection in Spring Boot application. Finally, we have Commons DBCP2. This library is a part of Apache Commons project and is a popular choice for connecting pulley. It offers robust features and is a great option if you prefer a well-established, widely used solution. To sum it up, Spring Boot provides several options for creating pooling data source, whether you go to Hikari CP for its stellar performance, the Tomcat pooling data source for its reliability, or common DBCP2 for its popularity. You have a flexibility to choose one of the best suits to your project needs. So move on to the next topic, production database with MySQL. Here we'll explore the different options for handling your database structure and security practices ensure a smooth and secure experience. In Spring Boot, database schema generation can be quite a dynamic journey. It's all about managing your database structure as your application involves. We have several options at our disposal to control this process. The first option is None, which is also default for MySQL. When you choose None, it means no changes are made to the database structure. Your database remains as is, with no automatic alteration. Next, we have Update. With this option, Hibernate dynamically changes the database to match the entity structure you have defined in your application. It adapts as your entity models evolve. Create is another choice. When you select this option, Spring Boot create the database every time your application starts, but doesn't drop it when you close your application. It's like starting with a clean slate with each run. Final option, create drop creates a database at the beginning and drop it when the session factory closes. It's like starting fresh for every session, ensuring a clean slate for each use. Now it's important to note that default setting varies depending on the database you are using. For embedded database like S2, the default is create drop, but for database like MySQL, the default is none. But here is the kicker, 
while you are in the development and testing phase having the database auto generated might be convenient however for production it's good security practice to set the schema generation to none once the database is in the stable production state revoke all privileges from the mysql user connecting to your spring application give the mysql user only the privilege needed for the application such as uh, select update insert and delete this minimizes potential security risk and ensure that your database remain in secure state next chapter we'll see this interesting topic scheduling task spring scheduler is a feature that allows you to schedule tasks to run at specified interval or times it's like having your own personal assistant for automating routine tasks with your spring application so we need to add a availability dependency and then we are going to enable the spring scheduler and we'll create some tasks let's see some code example to see spring scheduler in action i will demonstrate how to schedule tasks with is using annotation like scheduled in your spring boot project pom.xml add the availability dependency availability is useful library for testing asynchronous operation and it can be used in conjunction with spring scheduler for testing scheduled tasks to enable spring scheduler in your spring boot application add the enable scheduling annotation to your main application class we have this main configuration just say enable scheduling so if you just add this annotation then in your entire application will search for that scheduler annotation if you don't add then it will not start so i am going to create a method i can use this anywhere you have the configuration you can use any class any component create a scheduling task by using the scheduled annotation on the method in spring beans so i am going to write a one context here which is fixed read this method is executed at specified intervals for every second it will fire this schedule or fire this uh, method so i will just put 5 so at every 1000 is equal to 1 second and here i'm going to call uh, some logger so database logger this class logger factory is logger yes that is in force now this log info i will send data means a uh, new date every time i will on do util date okay that will fire new date uh, so i will just put some information i will say so but okay and now if i run this example at every 5 second you will see a information for log okay so my application is getting started So I will after getting started, I will just clean my console. You can see first time the schedule has been hit at this. See fifty seven. This is second twenty every five, right? Every five second it is hitting. So this is the example of scheduler. Uh, this is very effective when you want to do some certain tasks at some point. So this is one example where for fixed interval it is happening. Imagine the following scenarios: you want to run a task every night at midnight to tidy up temporary files and remove old data from your application, or you need to create reports every hour, store them in a designated folder automatically, or your goal is to automate customer billing process on the first day of each month. All these processes can be done. with the help of cron jobs scheduler the cron expression is a powerful and flexible way to define the scheduling pattern for your tasks it allows you to specify exact dates and times where the tasks should run the cron expression consists of six fields that represent the following components the first is seconds second asterisk is minute third asterisk is about hour fourth is about day of the month From one to thirty one. First, fifth asterisk is month. From one to twelve or Jan to Dec. The last one is the day of the week, represented by zero to seven 
or Sunday to Saturday. So this is for every minute. So wait for one minute to give you this information. We'll just schedule. So my application is started. Wait for one minute. Okay, you can see one minute is over and this has hit. So after one minute again, it will start. So I cannot show an example of different. You can do it by yourself. You can try with different. So we have to give space on our six. You can Google the exact cron, which uh, there are many editor, cron editor as well. You can use those and you can schedule to particular. So at the end, the ultimate thing is when you want to schedule, the method will get hit. If you want to call or you want to insert something or you want to update something or you want to retrieve some data, everything can be possible if you just call certain services from this method and you will get your result. Hope I am able to make you very much clear. If you have any doubt in any topic, please let me know in the comment below. That's a wrap and another topic of Spring Boot. We hope you found this guide helpful for optimizing your database management and task scheduling. If you got something out of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm Atindinath and you have been chilling with Wit Science. Keep coding and stay awesome.